games. So 2011 was your first games. Mm -hmm. That's crazy that yeah. you're on the podium. Yeah. It's your first it took, games. It took second. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I won. I went there that year. The only goal was to win everything. <laughs> single workout that was it and I won a lot of workouts that year I'm not gonna lie I'm not I'm not trying to brag I won there was that was the first year of the open and I, I should I I won't go into it but I I took second in the open and uh who's that first Dan Bailey you won that regional. and I won that regional and then I went to the games that year and I won my very first event and I won two other events that year. And yeah, I took second. Um, there's a couple workouts where if I, you know, I basically just blew it and uh, Rich, you know, I had such a great performance as well. And so, but yeah, I think he ended up beating me by like quite a few, just the points where I was pretty bad at the end. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a, that year was really cool. Uh, 2011 was a really fun year. The very first event, I remember announcing it. It was at the time I was still, you know, a Navy SEAL, so still training, you know, going through my training at work and stuff. And I mean, the first workout was a beach workout where it was a 200 meter swim, a mile soft sand run, 50 chest of our pull ups, 100 hand release push ups, and 200 air squats, and then another mile soft sand mile run. And I mean, I, I think I won by like. You know, it was uh, it was a really fun. That was one of that is one of my favorite events of all time. One of my top five moments for sure. Would you say running events are a strength of yours? Yeah, they definitely <laughs> definitely are. There were a few events that I typically did well in: running, swimming, till the end of my career, <laughs> and then thrusters. Whenever thrusters showed up, I I normally did, did well. To me, yeah. I just think of. Your Murph win. Yeah, the Murph win, obviously, that was uh, such a cool event. You know, and that, the first time they did it in 2015, I wasn't there. And then, so when they announced it again in 2016 that they were going to redo it, I was like, yes, like, here's my shot. You know, like, this is, I went into that workout. I tried not to have the expectation of winning it. I remember just thinking, my, like, just take top three and that's great. Like, that's all you need to do. Obviously, I truly wanted to win it. I want to win everything. I'm just, I think every CrossFit or every competitive athlete wants to always win. But I put the expectation in my head, like, just go top three. But then once it started, I was like, nobody's beating me in this. And so that was cool. Uh, that was a very special moment. Obviously being named after, you know, a fallen seal, Michael Murphy. But just a really cool event. And in the stadium, soccer stadium, um, yeah, it was it was fun. It was really cool. That was that's another top five moments for sure. That and that I felt like also changed the trajectory of my career too. I felt like people it got put out there so much, and I just like people just started to really gravitate towards. I mean, I don't know how many people who have told me that that was one of their all time favorite sports moments, which is like for me, I'm like, what? It's meaningful. Yeah, it's very meaningful. And the fact that uh, I got the opportunity to do it in competition was really special, for sure. That was, hands down, top five on, without a doubt. So that was, that, that even, that's top two, you know, like one or two. I, I have a hard time, like, numbering my memories because there's so many good ones. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's top two, Murph, for sure. I mean, I just... I can get the chills right now just thinking about how I felt crossing that line. Like, it was just, I wasn't tired. I could have probably done it again immediately. <laughs> it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah, so between Murph and the push-pull, that was... It was rich. Yeah, so me and Rich, you know, that, I mean, that is one of the most, you know, that finish was so awesome. The tennis stadium at Carson, 
was unreal. At night, under the lights, the crowd, the energy, you know, the workouts were always really fun, really good workouts. It was, it was special. And so to be honest, at the beginning, you had Ben Stoneberg who was ahead of us. And in my mind, I was just kind of staying in my lane. I wasn't really paying attention. Um, I knew that the handstand push-ups were going to start to get sticky for some people and handstand push-ups were another workout for me where I excelled at them. And I knew that if they got put into a workout and if they became the crux of a workout, I typically could prevail. And so for that workout, it definitely became, I, we didn't get to touch the sleds before. So we didn't really know how that was going to go. And you saw the people when you were in the, we were in the final heap. And so when you saw the people before, some people were standing, some people were sitting, you're trying to figure out, okay. And then you almost just had to play it by feel. And so the first couple ones you're standing up pulling, it was the, the sled was moving well. And then it definitely got to a point where you had to kind of lay down and push against the sandbag. Yeah. And all of a sudden I just remember I was kind of in like second or third behind Stoneberger and Stoneberger and Rich. And Rich, Rich was actually for a bigger guy, you know, he probably weighed close to 200, I'm guessing. You know, he's very good at hands. He was better at handstand pushups than I think he should have been. And so, um, you know, he was good, and, but the numbers got bigger in that workout for handstand pushups. So you had to start doing more towards the end. And so once it got to bigger numbers, that was where it flipped. And I remember just, I remember we both had kicked up and I heard him come down off the wall and, on one of the sets towards the end of the second to last set, I believe. And I still had the lead. And so, so then that's when I took the lead and I was, I was like, okay, you got him now. Like now it's like, now you just gotta stay up on the wall and keep getting these handstand pushups. You don't need to come down. You're good. You're, you're, you're fine. And I kicked down and go back over. He would get, he gained some ground. He gained some ground on the, the second to last sled. And then I ran down, came off the wall again before he did on the handstand pushups. And it was just like, all right, I don't know what this last slide's gonna feel like, but let's go. And I remember just, I said, I got a, you know, a little bit of a lead on him and I'm watching my sled and then I'm watching his sled and I'm like, why is his sled getting so much further every pole than my sled? That was all I could like, think about. And I'm like, just keep going, just keep going. And you're you like full body pulls. Yeah, full I body pulls. I'm like, I was like pulling that rope up to my nose. I remember just like trying to get the rope out of your way because that was the thing, right? You're you're pulling it into your lap. And so if the rope started piling up, you had to like get it off of you. And then my sandbag started to move a little bit. Judge runs up and pulls it back. And I mean, how I, you know, I mean, it was like less than a second. Intense. Yeah, it was a tenth, tenth of a second. I rushed like, or my judge was like, you're good. And I turned and jumped and it was just, that was... A really special moment. And that was also like one of the last times under the lights in the soccer state or at the tennis stadium that, you know, what got to go against Rich, right? Like that, you know, every, Rich was a four time champ. Matt was a five time champ. Anytime you're going head to head with one of those two guys, it was always something special. And so that was, uh, that was really cool. That was a cool. Well, he trained with Rich and like, yeah, had a relationship with Yeah, him. exactly. So I imagine being able to like fight yeah. that out. It was awesome. like, yeah, it was almost like out there, it was almost like in a way, like, you know, at home training with your buddy, you know, like you're like, oh, I'm just with my buddy next to my buddy, like who's going to win? Yeah. But now it was for real under the lights where, you know, an audience is watching. And so it just made it even that much cooler. And for the last time in the, yeah, like I said, in the, in the tennis stadium at night, which was, that was a really cool venue. And I always tend to, I tend to do decent out at those workouts at nighttime because they were more CrossFit, you know, normal CrossFit, organic CrossFit style workouts. It wasn't like the one at Max's or things like that. So that was, uh, that was really cool. Yeah, that was fun. Definitely between that and Murph, I have a hard time going back and forth because that was just such a cool atmosphere. Murph, obviously super special too, but both of those workouts are, they're right there. They were, they were really fun. Really, really cool. Really cool memories. Killer Cage, which was cool because it was like monkey bars and you're just like, what is this? And that was in 2011. A lot of people probably don't remember it. It was awesome that we got to bring it back to Rogue this past year. So that was really cool. Um, but yeah, again, that was 
that workout was really special. That was definitely probably a top five moment for me because it had a 225 front squat in it, which at the time in 2011 was a heavy front squat. And so I weighed 160, 165 probably at the time. And I'm doing a 225 front squat for seven. So it was three rounds. Um, and yeah, so like in my head, I was like, I don't, I don't know. I had no idea. Like it was, there was no expectation of that workout. I didn't know who would be able to do the monkey bars, who wouldn't. I didn't win the workout, but I won the heat. Um, I think I took second or third, I can't remember, um, in that one. And so, but I won the final heat and it was cool because Matt Chan had me, I mean, everyone kind of had me beat. I wasn't even, in the, after the first round, I think Rich was ahead of me. I think Kaliba might have been ahead of me. Chan might have been ahead of me. Um, and so I didn't know really uh, how it was going to go. And then I just kept moving the the barbell. I kept doing the front squats. And I wasn't the fastest on them. But then I could move. I moved really well on the killer cage part. But going into the final round, I remember being on the, the, the white. It was seven front squats, watt bike, uh, I think 750 meters. And then the killer cage down and back 50 feet, 50 feet or 100 foot. And so I remember being on the watt bike and I still had like two or 300 meters left and Chan got off and I was like, damn, I was like, okay, that's it. Well, I, I got to get second now. Now in my head, literally like, I was like, I, I just got to get second. Like I'm not catching that. I got to get second. And, uh, I remember getting off the bike and just cruising down the killer cage and I dropped down on the, uh, into the first turn, jump back up and I see Chan drop and i was like whoa he just dropped and so i'm like he was pretty far down like he was pretty close to finishing and so i was like that was that's i'm like that's crazy and then i just started so i'm like okay jump i jumped back up as fast as i could i got going chin jumped back up i'm like ah oh, damn that sucks and then he came back off again and he gave me the opening and then i i just went right past him and uh dropped and i mean that was a really cool moment as well. It was just so cool. Like when you come from behind to, to catch someone and get a win, that was uh, that was really fun and special as well. Um, and it was just a different element that nobody out there was training for. It was just like, oh, it's just it's monkey bars. It's it's playgrounds. Did you warm up? Did you get to warm up? No, you, on didn't, it? you didn't get to warm up on it. You never, did, you, did, you, did you get to touch the bars at all? No, nothing. No, and it was a it was actually the the bars were so high. I remember like have to do like a max vert jump <laughs> to get up there. But the killer cage, again, that's probably a top five moment for sure. That was, uh, that was really cool. To be honest, not all my top five memories, at least what I, you know, when we decided to make this, kind of talk about this stuff, I remember thinking in my head, like, it's not all, all my best memories aren't the most positive ones. Um, and so my next favorite memory is from the 2013 games. And it was the finale. And it's the old, good old 405 deadlift workout where I got exposed, um, you know, on the floor in front of everyone where that is like the most helpless feeling in the world when you have a workout where you know you, you, you just weren't as prepared for it as you should have been. And uh, remember when he said it, I was like, damn, you know, like that's gonna be brutal. I just wasn't deadlifting nearly as much at the time. And then we had those heavy weighted single squat, uh, pistols. And uh, I was like, pistols, I was like, oh, okay, that should be fine. But it was also like, it was like, weird how to hold the thing. And um, I don't know, I guess I, did, I didn't, hadn't trained it a ton, but my deadlift, I was like the last workout, a little beat up. Typically, your posterior chain is, gets, gets destroyed at CrossFit uh, games. And so, yeah, you're going to the final event, you're like, oh, wow, 405 is still heavy for me. And um, yeah, and I remember just getting out there and I, I got through the first round. And I was like, okay, definitely not winning this workout. Now let's just make sure we, get, we finish the workout. Um, you know, got through the second round. At this point, I'm like, those deadlifts are starting Hurt. It was a short bar too, so it makes the weight feel a little bit heavier. And uh, everyone's already passing. I'm definitely in last place by like a lot at this point on the on the event. And so I'm like, all right, just stop. You know, 
thinking, okay, stop thinking about all the bad things that's going on, all the, you know, how embarrassed you are and how upset you are. It doesn't matter anymore. It's, you know, just get to this workout, just figure it out and, and figure out how to do it. Cause in the, in the warm up area, to be honest, the four or five felt good. And, uh, I was like, damn, this is okay. This is going to be better. This is going to be fine. I'll be fine. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. And, um, got to that final, uh, round. So it's three rounds of five and then came around pistols. It was, I think it was five pistols each leg too, or something like that. And, uh, so I got to the final round of the deadlift. I'm, I got through, I pulled one. I was like, man, my back, my back at that point is gone. And <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, okay, I'm looking at the time. I think it was like six minutes or seven minutes or something. And I'm like, uh, I don't, I don't think I'm getting this done, but like you can't give up. You can't quit on yourself. So kept trying to pull it as much as I could. I, I got through 13 of the 15 reps, but you know, like just got exposed. I got, and being out there on the floor, you just, yeah, it feels like you're standing there naked. Like everyone's just like eyes on, like you feel so embarrassed so exposed and uh, I had no one else to blame but myself. You know, it's not Dave's fault or anybody else's fault for picking the workout. It was 100% my fault. When you go to the CrossFit Games, they can throw anything at you and you need to be ready for it. And, you know, the, the, the mo the, I just, I was so pissed. I threw my belt, threw my glasses. People gave me so much shit for it. And I wasn't mad. I wasn't throwing a temper tantrum. I was just angry at myself. And, um, wasn't like angry at it anybody else it was just i can't believe you allowed yourself to be in that scenario and it was why i say it's one of my top five moments is because it changed my thinking completely it was like okay you weren't a victim of anything other than your lack of training you let your lack of preparedness right you chose not to focus on the deadlift which wasn't a strength of yours and now you got put on the spot and you had and you didn't get to you know finish or place the way that you wanted to so yeah for me it was it was a, the best learning lesson i could have taken that two ways right i could have been like oh poor me I, why'd they do 405 deadlift i only weighed 160 pounds whatever like a lot of ways you could have taken that right but for me it was like no it was your fault and i just made sure that that would never happen again um and so it was a great learning lesson it was one of my favorite moments because it's it's great to be humbled and that is a hell of a motivator and a hell of a teacher to be humbled like that and so you know fueled you yeah fueled for the next year for when uh uh the next time they i saw the four or five deadlift in a workout was the 2016 regionals which i was like i couldn't have been more fired up for i was so stoked when they put that in that regional workout so and i won that workout so that there is that and so that's why that was one of my Top five favorite moments for sure. So 2015 is the Cinco. Cinco one and two. So one of my last or top five moments is actually funny because we started off with my very first workout on the competition floor at CrossFit Games. And my last mem favorite memory is my last workout on the cross against floor, which was in 2018 in Madison. And um, so a lot of people didn't know because I didn't put it out there, but going into that 2018 season, my knee was shot. Like my left knee just had nothing left in it. I almost withdrew from the CrossFit Games prior to even going. I remember going to the regional, I felt great, felt amazing. Two days after regionals ended, I could barely walk. I couldn't run anymore. I couldn't squat heavy. Uh, I, my training just took a huge hit and I was like, I just had this pain in my inside of my knee that was so, it was basically like someone was stabbing me. I don't know how many days I'd go out. I'm like, just going to train through it, push through it, you know, and go to the CrossFit games. And I'd go out into the, my garage, start training. And I would, I'd leave in like 30 minutes and just so pissed off and be like, I, I need to go withdraw. And I was going to go, I don't know how many times I left my garage training and saying, I'm going to withdraw from the CrossFit games. But then I, I kept thinking, I earned my spot. I went to the regional. This might, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, what I'm going to need to do with this knee. I'm probably going to have to have surgery. You know, at this point, I was 30. In 2018, I was actually 35. I could have qualified. I could have went masters that year. 
uh, technically with my age. And so the fact that I, I qualified, I was like, let me just go and see what I can do and get through it. And, um, and if I have to withdraw while I'm there because of an event, then I'll withdraw and that's fine. And, you know, I was actually proud of myself for even going because old Josh or younger Josh would have not even enjoyed it, would have been pissed off the whole time because I never went to the CrossFit Games unless I knew I could win it, except for in 2018. 2018 was the only time where I went there just to participate and get through the workouts and, um, and just, you know, I wasn't there with a mindset of like, I'm going to win this this year. And so it was tough. It was a struggle, you know, but I, uh, I was actually proud of myself that I was able to like, kind of like step back and take it in, enjoy the games that year. Um, did you know that last workout was going to be your last games workout? Did you think that? I, I had thoughts. I wasn't a hundred percent sure if it was, but I had thoughts that it might. I remember after I left the floor on the final event, I told a couple of people, Hey, I think that might be it. And like, it's been an honor, you know, to like compete against you. But, um, yeah, anyway, so the final event was, I mean, I'm out there and I remember, I mean, I, we had to do pistols and chaos. Uh, what else? There was a couple of things where I was like, we had to do a running workout where you pull the sled and bike. And I was like, I could barely run. Um, and the pistols, but when I, I thought for sure if pistols came up, I'd have to withdraw. And for somehow, or somehow I got through them. I have no idea how. <laughs> to be honest, I think the adrenaline is a hell of a, um, a thing. So, um, yeah, I got through that. But the final event they announced, and it was a pegboard, thruster, heavy yoke walk. And I was like, oh, shit. And the yoke got heavier every round. So there's three rounds of it. And the yoke got heavier. And the final yoke was like 660 pounds. And so I was like, oh, shit. Um, <laughs> like, I'm like, really? Am I going to make it to the crossing games and make it through every event except for the final event? And so I remember going out there. And I actually had to course. They had, they were like, there were three standards for the yoke. And I was like, guys, I'm like, it was... Um, it was, it was still too tall. I think the final one was still a little too tall. I didn't like the placement of it. I'm like, we need to adjust these yokes for every single person. Like this isn't like, this is 600. You're asking us to walk 660 pounds. Why can't we just take the time and drop it to where every person pr prefers it to be? And so, uh, I actually, and they, I mean, I, I brought it to Dave. I brought it to, obviously Bosman was the head judge at the time. And I was like, Hey, Bosman, Bosman, like, this is what it is. I'm like, Dave, this needs to change. Like, this isn't okay. Like, like I, I need this bar to come down a notch. Like, in, but your final, the final one was just at a different stage. I'm like, and they, and they actually did. And that was cool. That was like one of the one time that I remember where, you know, an athlete fought for something and got it. And typically it's like, nope, this is it. This is the way it's going. And, you know, it is what it is. So that was a really cool thing that CrossFit did. And uh, so anyway, so we, we came out. I remember I was in the, first heat, you know, which is never fun anyways. I'm already, you know, you're already in like 32nd place or something. And, uh, but, the, but I looked at that workout and to be honest, I loved yoke carries, loved them. And I actually, I love, and I love pegboards and I love thrusters. And so I'm like, this is, this is a good workout for me, except for the fact that it's a 660 pound yoke. And I, I basically have one on one leg. And so I was like, don't blow your fucking knee out on this final event. You know, like it's the last one. You're in 32nd place. You're not going anywhere. It's not like you're going to jump to first place. So, you know, just, just get through what you can get through. And, uh, I came out and I went unbroken on the pegboards, five pegboards. I felt really good. And I was like, okay. And then it was like, I can't remember how many thrusters. I think I did 90 thrusters or something like that. Lightweight, 95 pounds, which were fine. Like squatting was never an issue. Even when, um, uh, even through the season or in the training when I was, it was weird movements that hurt my knee, but like squatting wasn't one of them. And so I was like, okay, especially not 95 pounds. That was fine. And so got through that and I got to the, to the yoke pretty quick. And I was actually, I was like, oh man, I'm moving fine. And I picked up that first yoke and I was like, okay, this isn't too bad. And then the second yoke and I was like, oh yeah, it's, it's, this is definitely harder. And people were starting to, to catch up. Um, and, uh, and then I finally got to that final weight. 
And I remember just like going underneath and I was just so nervous that my knee was just gonna like, cause when you're on a yoke, you know, you're walking and you're, you go to one leg for a moment, you know, as you're walking this way, you're never, you're not on two legs. And so, so you're gonna load that knee. So basically you're gonna load, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna load this left knee with 660 pounds. <laughs> and I'm like, and it hurt so bad. And so I basically, well, I got to it. I finally, I, I was just doing, I was doing almost uh, just all my right leg. And so I would just, I would get a step and I'd just bring the left up to it. Just get a step, bring the left up to it. Just get a step, bring, and I basically did, did the final one on, the, on that one side. And, um, and I mean, it stopped me in my tracks a few times, you know, and I, I definitely needed the crowd. The crowd sort of got so behind me and it was amazing. Uh, and so, yeah, finally I got it across the finish line. I finished the workout in time. I didn't get time capped. And the fact that I got it that with that knee in that scenario, you know, really nothing, to, nothing to do with, no reason to do it other than my own pride. Um, and that was the way that I ended the career. It was just, uh, it was a really cool thing. I was so proud of myself that I actually finished it, got through the entire season or got through the entire weekend and that final workout on one leg was, um, and I did it with like a mindset where I actually appreciated, I appreciated the crowd more. I appreciated the athletes more. I had this just really cool experience where I took it all in and didn't dwell on how my placement or how I wasn't doing, you know, the workouts to the abilities I thought I should be able to do them to. It was more so just appreciation of my career. And I kind of felt it all kind of coming together and it was a really cool, That's cool. feeling. And, um, yeah, just really proud because <laughs> like I said before, younger Josh would have hated every minute of that competition would have hated every minute of every workout, would have gone home every night and just ridiculed yourself uh, to death. But I was able to, you know, just have those, um, have a different look almost, you know, at the event and uh, and the competition and, and myself. And so, uh, yeah, very proud moment of, for me, for sure. It's definitely a top five moment, which, you know, if you're looking at someone's career, it wouldn't have been something you'd say, for the most part, you had nothing special. Like from the outside looking in, you're like, oh yeah, you took 30 seconds, great, good job. Like nobody cares. <laughs> you know? But uh, I was very proud of it. And uh, it was it was cool. It was cool seeing that I was able to transition to that mind that mindset really was the biggest part for me. Just being able to understand where I was at the time and you know, not so much giving in to something, but more so just being real with it because it was more so the knee I don't think it was my actual capabilities or my, my um, athletic capabilities at the time because I, the 2018 regionals, I felt really good. But then with the injury coming in or whatever happens to that knee, I, there was no moment in that regional that I was like, oh, my knee's fucked up. It was just like, oh, two days afterwards, I just I was like, I couldn't stand on it without insane pain. And so um, it was very strange. But being able to get, have the mindset to, you know, if I if I would have withdrawn, I would have regretted it a big, like um, a lot, a lot, and I would have lost a lot of memories that I got out of that last season. You know, I have eight event wins, which is the third most on the male side, tied with Fakowski, who just tied me in this past year. You know, you got Matt, who's got like an, a bazillion wins, I think. Then Rich has got like <laughs> I don't know, like twenty, but I had eight, and then so that's third most in the, on the men's side. Uh, of CrossFit Games event wins. All of those wins were really cool. The ranch, going to the ranch was a really cool moment. I mean, that was, for me, so nostalgic because I watched and knew, I mean, I've been doing CrossFit since 05, and so when they created the games in 07, I was like, oh, this is really cool. I, I'd like to go do that, but I joined the Navy in March of 07, and so I didn't get the opportunity to go compete. Um, and then... So going back in 16, like watching, like being at the Aromas Ranch, you know, Dave's Ranch, and that was really special. And that was just a cool thing too. Like didn't tell us what we were doing. We hopped on a plane, didn't really even tell us where we were going. You know, obviously it said San Jose on our um, ticket. And so we knew, then we kind of figured it out. And uh, yeah, so that was really cool getting out there and doing that, that 5K trail where it was gnarly. 
into the deadlift, which was, a, that was a cool event. You know, you ran the trail and then the, your placing is when, how you started your deadlift. So the person who took last on the trail lift or the person who took last on the trail run had to start the deadlift first. And so if you took first, you start the deadlift last, so you got the most rest. And I took second in the trail run to Matt. And um, so that was a really cool event. And then flying back and just a great memory. So that's definitely a notable mention. Yeah, Naughty Nancy was a cool one. And that was because I, you know, you had to do, so that was in 13 and it was me. I took first, I think Rich and Jason were right behind me. Um, and uh, I just like, yeah, I, I didn't, I think it was like 25. So it was four rounds of a loop around the soccer stadium with up the hill and down the stairs in the soccer stadium, which was a gnarly run <clears throat> into 25 overhead squats, which which was like 145, I think at the time, or 150, I can't remember. But it wasn't too close, too far away from my body weight, where everyone else's body weight was probably like 30 pounds more. Um, and yeah, I, I I didn't know, it wasn't feeling that great in the warm up area, but uh, once I got on that floor, like I picked up that bar and I just had it in a great position. And I, I'm like, there's no way I'm putting this down. And I did the whole workout unbroken and won that workout. And that was a, that was a cool event. Oh, the, the legless rope climb thruster workout that I won. But I was in the heat prior and I was in the third heat, so not the final heat. And that was the first time they did legless rope climbs. And I remember thinking when they announced it, I was like, oh, this is good for me. Like these big boys, like leg rope climbs is good for tall people. Legless rope climbs is good for, you know, smaller, lighter guys. And so I was like, I'm going to get up. Like, I'm going to have no issues going up this rope. This is going to be great. And it, and, with, compare, and when it was, you know, in conjunction with a thruster, I was like, oh, even better. Like, now it's even more for a short person. So, yeah, that was a, a really cool event. I think I went unbroken on the thrusters, which I don't think many other people did. And uh, I just timed the legless rope climbs perfect. And I had a, a really good score. I think it was me and Kimmy Leverich, I believe. Who were like right there, one and two, and then Rich, uh, Rich was in that final. He he had a he had a good pace, but then I saw him. He kind of back. He lost his pace the third round, I believe. And I was like, okay, I got this. This is another another event win, which is anytime you win an event, it's always cool. Another one of my favorite moments is not something that anybody saw. It wasn't an event. It wasn't a uh, like one of the workouts. It was actually just the 2014 games. The in the back in the warm up area, it was my all time favorite, and there is behind the scenes footage of it, and so it's cool that the, they have that. You know, Savon did that, and so we just had a really good time. A lot of joking around, a lot of messing with each other. Uh, just my favorite season when it came to like the guys and the camaraderie of the athletes, the competitors. Even though we. The moment we got on the floor, you know, we all wanted to win. We all wanted to beat each other. But like when we were off, it was just like a lot of joking, a lot of making fun of each other, you know, telling stories, and doing dumb shit. And uh, yeah, that was that season, my 2014, I always say that, that was my favorite season behind the scenes. Like when you could see or have all that, all your buddies back there, I mean, it just felt like training at your garage with your friends and just having fun in between workouts from making fun of each other, having a good time and then go back on the floor and trying to, trying to kill each other. So yeah, the people, yeah, it was, that was a 2014 was a, that season was my favorite games season for sure. That was, that was a fun time. Trip down memory lane. That was it. A trip down memory lane. <laughs> that was fun. You know, it's always, it's always good to relive and think about those things. Uh, you know, constantly day to day we, we we forget about our past sometimes and you forget about you know the things that you've done the things that you've accomplished um the lessons you've learned you know it's always good to go back and think about those and you know be proud be proud of you know where you came from and where you where you're at and where you're going so very cool i'm glad uh you know whitney here is the one who had the great idea to do that uh this video so i hope you guys enjoyed that like, subscribe, and do the thing. And as always, don't forget.